Now we'll understand about forced vibrations. If you were to take a guitar string and stretch it to a given length and a given tightness and pluck it, you would hear a sound. But the sound would not even be close in comparison to the loudness produced by an acoustic guitar. On the other hand, if the string is attached to the sound box of the guitar, the vibrating string is capable of forcing the sound box into vibrating at that same natural frequency. The sound box in turn forces air particles inside the box into vibrational motion at the same natural frequency as the string. The entire system, string, guitar and enclosed air begins vibrating and forces surrounding air particles into vibrational motion. The tendency of one object to force another adjoining or interconnected object into vibrational motion is referred to as a forced vibration. In case of a guitar string mounted to the sound box, the fact that the surface area of the sound box is greater than the surface area of the string means that more surrounding air particles will be forced into vibration. This causes an increase in the amplitude and thus loudness of the sound. So basically when you pluck a single guitar string it does produce sound, but the sound is not audible very nicely. But if the same string is mounted on a sound box and then plucked, then the sound becomes loud enough. This is because the surface area of the strong box, sound box and the air enclosed into it have larger area, to which increases the loudness. We already know that one of the factors which increases the loudness of the sound is surface area. But the sound box and the air are forced to vibrate. Remember, they are forced to vibrate with the same frequency as that of the string. Similarly, if the tunic fork is held in hand and hit with a rubber mallet, a sound is produced as the tines of the tunic fork set surrounding air particles into vibrational motion. The sound produced by the tunic fork is barely audible. If you strike a tunic fork on a rubber pad and try to hear the sound, the sound is Hardly bearable. It, you are able to hear it when you bring it close to the ears only. However, if the tunic fork is set upon the whiteboard panel or any other board, the panel begins vibrating at the same natural frequency of the tunic fork. The tunic fork forces surrounding particles into vibrational motion. The vibrating whiteboard in turn forces surrounding air particles into vibrational motion and the result is an increase in the amplitude and thus loudness of the sound. So by these two examples of a tuning fork and a vibrating string, we understand that the loudness or they can be by having a, having them on a larger surface area. So, 
the surface area is forced to vibrate with the same frequency as the string or the tuning fork and we hear a loud sound. This principle of forced vibration explains why demonstration during tunic forks are mounted on a sound box, why a commercial music box mechanism is mounted on a sounding board, why a guitar utilizes a sound box and why a piano string is attached to a sounding board. A louder sound is always produced when an accompanying object of greater surface area is forced into vibrations at the same natural frequency as the vibrating body. So, when a body executes vibrations under the action of an external periodic force, then the vibrations are called forced vibrations. So, now we have those kinds of vibrations which are forced to vibrate with the frequency of the applied force. They are not able to vibrate with their own natural frequency, rather only vibrate with the frequency of applied force. The object vibrates with the frequency of the external periodic force, which is different from the natural frequency of the vibrating object. The object executing vibrations under the effect of external periodic force is called driven and the agency supplying external periodic force is called the driving force or driver. Examples of forced vibrations. First, someone ringing the temple bell during prayers. The vibrations of bell are forced vibrations. As the driving force for the vibrations of the bell is provided by the hand of the person. Speaking in front of a microphone diaphragm. When a person speaks in front of microphone diaphragm, the sound box of microphone executes forced vibrations with frequencies corresponding to the speech of the speaker hitting a drum. When a person hits the membrane of a drum with a piece of sticks, forced vibrations are set up in the membrane as well as air present in the hollow drum. Similarly, when the stem of a vibrating tuning fork is held in hand, only a feeble sound is heard. We have done this just now. If, however, the stem is made to stand on a table, the sound becomes intense. The reason is that on placing the stem on the table, the vibrations of the tunic fork are communicated to the table, which is set in forced vibrations. Because the surface area of the table is quite large, vibrations of the table send out sound waves in a large volume of air. Hence, the sound becomes intense. All stringed musical instruments as sonometer, piano, violin, sitar, etc. carry a hollow box which is called the sound board. It is helpful in increasing the intensity of notes. 
when a note of any frequency is produced in a string of the instrument, the vibrations of the string reach the hollow box through the bridge fixed below the strings. You must have noticed that there is a small bridge below the strings of the of any musical instrument. Hence, force vibrations are produced in the air inside the box and the intensity of sound increases.